us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to damage earth and sea, saying, Do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have marked the servants of our God with a seal on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000, sealed out of every tribe of the people of Israel. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me. Who are those robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the song, Lord, this is the company of those who seek your face.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in God purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Gospel of the Lord. I remember once hearing a man say that his wife was a real angel, not a saint, an angel. He said, yep, she's always up in the air harping about something. We 
are all called to be part of the communion of saints. We will profess that in a couple minutes in the Apostles' Creed. We are, as John tells us in our second reading today, children of God through our baptism. And what we will be in the future, he says, we do not yet know. But we need to live in such a way today as children of God to be ready for whatever it is God is calling us to in the future. I think sometimes when we think of the saints, or if we ask a child, to, to, who, a devout Catholic child, to, devote, uh, to uh, portray a saint, they get sort of a long look on their face, a, a sort of distant look, you know, doesn't seem very earthly at all. And yet when we look at the lives of the saints, they're very earthly people. Some of them with great sense of humor, some of them with bad tempers that they were working on to control. Uh, some of them with very interesting pasts. St. Augustine apparently at one point said, O Lord, give me chastity, but not yet. They, like us, were on the road to heaven, and some of them had a long road to travel, as do you and I. And the challenge is for us to keep on that road and keep traveling, to recognize our weaknesses and the ways that sometimes we don't act as children of God, and to seek to do better. And like I said at the beginning of Mass, I, I hope all of us know people that we can look to or that we've known in the past that we'd say, now there was a person who was very saintly. You know, one of the uh, aspe uh, virtues that's called for in somebody that they're looking to canonize a saint is heroic virtue. It's a term they use, that this person was known for heroic virtue. And I think sometimes we can get, we can misunderstand that term to mean somebody who's exceptional. But I think often true heroic virtue is in the ordinary things of daily life. You know, I remember I was just thinking today, uh, preparing for the Mass tonight, about a reflection that I remember a retreat director gave once where he talked about his dad. His dad had had a very menial job for 40 years in, in a factory, a woodworking factory. And he said, you know, my dad wasn't really enthused about his work, uh, but he was enthused about being able to do it to be able to provide for his family. Isn't that heroic virtue? When you see the young mother with an overly active child that's carrying on and the mother's patiently working with that child. Is that heroic virtue? That woman who was described as an angel by her husband, does she need heroic virtue to put up with him? All of us are called, each in our own way, to a saintly life, to be God's people. And today we celebrate all those who have gone before us. When I was looking at the, um, uh, the uh, Living with Christ Missalette, each Sunday they have a reflection uh, that somebody gives, and, and for All Saints Day it was Christina Higgins. And I thought some of her comments were wonderful. I want to share them with you. She said, The saints, both those who have gone before us and those who walk among us still, are icons of holiness windows through which we glimpse the face of God. Nice imagery. Windows through which we glimpse the face of God. Isn't that what a, a saint does for us? He allows, she allows us to see God through them. All of us are called to holiness, to a life shaped by gospel values. Today's reading of the Beatitudes offers us some guidelines. Bombarded by the lures of consumerism, we are called to be poor in spirit. In a world beset by war and violence, we are called to be peacemakers. In a society that prioritizes competitiveness and ruthless individuality, we are called to be humble. Where grief and discouragement prevail, we are called to be merciful. In the face of injustice, we are invited to hunger and thirst 
for righteousness. And she concludes, Today we pray for the grace to recognize that we are all called to be saints. In the words of the psalm, may we live with clean hands and pure hearts as we look forward in hope to sharing in the light of eternal life. As we continue in our Mass, I invite you to join with me in taking a couple minutes just to sit and reflect on that image of windows through which we glimpse the face of God and to ask God to help us to know, well, to thank God for those windows through whom we have glimpsed Him and to ask the Lord to help us to shine up our windows, to help us to be more saintly, to be more clearly children of God and people who help others to recognize God's goodness through our own holiness of life. God bless you. Let us now together profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here among us, we offer to him our prayers of petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Peter, our Archbishop, that they may be given the courage and strength to lead and guide the Church through difficult times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our Church, that as a community of beloved disciples, we may demonstrate our commitment to model gospel living through the living of the Beatitudes in our daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our diocesan family, that we may continue to assist individuals and families in their search for resources, food, shelter, and community in these challenging COVID pandemic times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that the Spirit of God may enlighten the hearts and minds of world leaders to courageously speak out against all forms of violence, racism, intolerance, and actions that undermine human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of thanksgiving for the intercession of God's beloved saints, for the healing and transformation of the human family and our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work on behalf of the poor, the marginalized, and those seeking mercy, justice, and a sense of belonging, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing and strength for the sick recommended to our prayers, especially for those who face terminal illnesses, and for all who provide compassionate care for the sick every day, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, Leo Dormady, Sister Patricia Whittle, Joseph Brown, and for comfort and prayer for loved ones who mourn their passing from this life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this evening, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the Lord. His name, our good and the good of all, His holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Toward her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, 
and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptism we are God's children and so now with confidence we can pray to our Heavenly Father using the prayer that Jesus our brother taught us our Father who art in heaven 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two-meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The Body of Christ.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God, 
do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Two things before the final blessing. Uh, one is uh, tonight's the night where we get that extra hour of sleep. Don't forget to turn your clock back an hour before you go to bed. And the other thing, I was just remembering, I studied with a guy from uh, Raleigh, I think it's North Carolina, uh, really nice guy, uh, but flamboyant as could be. He was a priest in that diocese. And uh, always uh, flashy clerical shirts, bright colors, and uh, he wore suspenders, bright red suspenders, you know, a really flashy character. And in the same town, there were two parishes, and the other pastor was exactly the opposite of him. He was always in his cassock, a very austere-looking guy. So one year, uh, like this year, uh, uh, Halloween uh, was on the Saturday, and so they dressed up as each other. So... The, the flamboyant guy was dressed in a cassock when he was greeting the people at the doors of the church for Mass. And the other guy was wearing suspenders and a flashy shirt that the people had never seen him in before. God bless them both. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. And we have a special threefold blessing for the saints. May God, the glory and joy of the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Freed through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. So that together with all, you may possess the joys of the homeland, where Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is 447 in the CBW. Thank you.